We're all getting older, and most of us have less time to play than ever. Maxing your RuneScape account takes thousands of hours. Hours that you will never get back. Was it all worth it? No. What if I told you there is a way to max your RuneScape account while enjoying your real life at the same time? Because my favorite way to play the game is by not playing the game. Today, I'll be teaching you how to AFK your max kit. I recently made a video where I went on a deep dive into the specifics on how to max your account. I talk about getting your mindset right and a bunch of other really important things that go into maxing your account. If you are interested, I'll leave a link down in the description below. In this video, I'm gonna focus more on the actual methods themselves, but first, let's define AFKing before you guys eat me alive in the comments. The acronym AFK stands for away from keyboard. So when we say AFKing, we mean that we're doing an activity in game that we don't need to actively be putting in inputs for. None of you are going to agree on what is and what isn't AFK. Just like the question of what is the mid game, everybody has a different idea of like what makes something more AFK. I swear to God, if I hear one more of you tell me that rooftops are AFK or the tombs of a mascot or something, uh, but that's the thing. I mean, people just use the term to mean something that is like chill and relaxed, which is fine. Words change meaning over time, but this is not one of those times. In this video, when I'm looking for the most AFK method for a skill, I'm looking to answer the question, what is the most amount of experience that I can gain before having to touch my mouse or keyboard again? There are a load of different methods where you can go a long time without clicking, but the experience is so bad that you would never do it. At the end of the day, some of these just don't have an AFK method. And for those, I will just be picking whatever is the most chill. All right, boys, before we get started, let's get our rune light set up. This is gonna be very important we need to type in a log out timer in the settings we are going to need to make our idle timeout 25 minutes this is the highest it goes does not go higher than 25 minutes and this will allow us to afk for the maximum amount of time before our account logs out for AFK, your melee and range stats, nothing is going to beat the Ammonite Crabs. You throw on your best armor and gear, sip your potions, throw on auto retaliate, and you have 10 minutes till you have to do anything. After these 10 minutes, the Crabs will lose aggression to you. I recommend downloading the NPC Aggression Timer plugin. Within the plugin, it's going to show you the area lines where you need to run to to reset aggression. So for this one, I just need to run right past this line and that will reset the aggression for another 10 minutes. This makes it way less likely for any crashers to come and try to gaslight you telling you stuff like he's been here for three hours doesn't know what you're talking about his dad is jagex and he's actually reporting you honorable mention to the nightmare zone every single video i make with a similar topic somebody has to mention this in the comments it's still a good training method it's just not as afk as crabs if you prefer the nightmare zone go for it be my guest Magic is unlike the other combat skills, and it introduces two new great ways to train the skill while AFK. Splashing is the single most AFK activity in the game, tied with a few others, but it will run the entire course of your logout timer. Fun fact, back in the day, you could actually do this for a full six hours for the six hour logout timer if you did it in a PvP world, but it has since been patched. To do this, you need to get your magic attack bonus below negative 63, so negative 64 and lower. This means that you will never kill your enemy and you do it against an enemy that is weak enough to never kill you, which allows you to just continuously get the base casting experience for the spell. The experience per cast is really low with splashing. If you did want to get full experience, you can always come to crabs. It is only going to be a 10 minute AFK timer like we saw in the last section. However, the experience per interaction might actually be higher. Now the very best possible method unfortunately does require you to have a Kraken test, so you do need the 87 Slayer, you do need to go and get the task, but you can attack this center portal without disturbing any of the side tentacles here, get full experience, take no damage, and AFK the full 25 minutes. The single most AFK way to train prayer is going to be using the Bone Crusher down here in the Catacombs of Curran. Every time you kill an enemy, it's gonna automatically bury those bones for you, which gives you some experience. Then it's also going to restore your prayer points because every time you bury a bone in the Catacombs of Curran, you get one prayer point. This is gonna help you sustain yourself for longer, which is why it is the most AFK possible way. However, I don't think it's gonna give you the most prayer experience per interaction. It's fun to bring the Bone Crusher along if you're doing Slayer down there anyways, but I wouldn't go down there specifically to train prayer. Your best bet if you really wanna AFK this is to come to the World 3 30 house parties and just use your bones on somebody's gilded altar. They're going to have both of those burners lit for you and you'll just AFK that full inventory, go back outside, 
unnote, rinse and repeat. I do want to say that this is much slower and much more expensive than using the chaos altar. If you don't have to AFK this, I would recommend not AFKing this and going and doing it in the wilderness. My favorite AFK runecrafting activity is Zaya runecrafting. I did probably more than half of my 99 runecrafting here. The mining of the essence blocks is super laid back. Some people might argue that this method isn't really AFK. There's just really nothing that is better than this that is AFK. You can usually mine your full inventory in probably like two or three clicks or so. The only thing is that after that, you do have to run it over to the altar and then run it to the the other altar. You're looking at about 30 to 35k an hour at the blood altar, and with the soul altar, you're looking at 40 to 45k an hour. Another great super low-key option is the ZMI altar or the Orania altar. If you look right here, I'm almost at the entrance and I can click on the altar using the GPU plugin, and that way you'll just have to click there, you'll run all the way over. In the official ZMI or Orania altar world, there will be a ton of people doing this method, which means that you're going to take a lot less damage from all of the NPCs that you see attacking me on my screen now. This method is a little bit more complicated to set up and everything, so if you are interested in this, I do recommend looking up a full guide. There is nothing for construction. You can get some passive construction experience through things like the Tombs of a Mask at Monkey Room or through Winter Todd, but at the end of the day, neither of those are really AFK in any way, shape, or form. Congratulations, you get hit points for free by doing your other combat skills. What's up guys, just wrapping up this video now. If you are enjoying the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. It's the best thing you can do to help out the channel and I really appreciate it. There is one purely AFK method for agility. Welcome to the Blast Furnace. It's just like gym class all over again. We are riding the bike for one experience per tick. That's right gamers, if you're doing the math along with me, that's 100 experience per minute, which works out to about 6k per hour. And by about, I mean exactly 6k per hour. The good thing about that is this is 25 minutes AFK. It is as AFK as you can possibly get. The bad thing is that the experience is dog. If you're open to something that's way less AFK, Barbarian Fishing is another great option for AFK agility training. The agility experience is about the same as the bike, but you also get some of the best fishing experience of the game and some strength experience as well. Back in my day, the way to train thieving was to tape over a wireless mouse and just click away at the arty knights. There was no coin pouch. You would just infinitely do this until you logged out or got bored. Just to fill you in on the lore a little bit, Jagex introduced the coin pouch. Coin pouch was meant to prevent botting. Uh, so basically, you have to click on that coin pouch before you continue thieving, which bots could easily do. So this basically just neuters regular players. That being said, people were pretty open about auto-clicking this back then. Now all you skibbity toilet watching Gen Zers are all about the squirking. Or at least you were until it completely died. The problem with squirking, and it was like the best AFK method, is that based on your player ID in game from like when you logged in into the server, the same person would get caught over and over again and nobody else would get caught. So if you were that guy who got caught, you would just leave because you were getting no experience. And then eventually everybody would leave because eventually you would be that guy. So it was just a very unsustainable method that relied on people not knowing about that. Squirking still is some of the best experience for agility that is like pretty AFK-ish. I'm, I'm not gonna go out and say that this is like a real AFK method or anything, but you can download the one-click Summer Garden plugin and this is gonna help you out. Uh, I've actually been trying to figure this out for a little bit here and I haven't. I recommend that you watch a full guide because I'm not gonna be able to explain this to you. If I was maxing this, I would probably just still do Arty Knights. Herblur is a great classic bank standing skill. Stamina potions are gonna be your best bet for the AFK experience. It's not gonna be that AFK, but it is twice as AFK as all the other potions. Since the other potions don't have a stackable secondary ingredient, you're only gonna be able to make 14 per inventory. Uh, but with the stamina potion, the amylized crystal does stack into one spot, so you're able to make 27 potions, making this almost twice as AFK as any of the standard methods. If we go onto the wiki, we can see that there's a few other options for a 27 potion inventory, looking at anti-venoms, uh, which use Zolder scales at 87, and then also another good bet would be Forgotten Brews at level 91. Both of those other options are about three times as expensive as stamina potions, so I do recommend just sticking with staminas if you are trying to do this.
Just like with Raiden's Purples, we're going back to back with the bank standing skills. And honestly, your options here are pretty varied. There, there's so many different options to train crafting. Just go through the menus. There's like literally hundreds of things you can do. If you're going for the longest total AFK time, make gold bracelets. But this is also really bad experience and you have to run all the way to the furnace. Doing something actually at the bank like cutting gems is going to be a good bet. If you can't see here on screen, these are giving me more than four times the experience per action. The other cool thing about gems is that the actions are faster than other bank standing methods like blowing glass but that also means that you're going to have to be a little bit less afk because you are going to have to bank get more gems and keep on doing that more often than you would with glass speaking of glass most of you iron men know all about this and it's like basically the only way to train crafting on uh an iron man but anyways, this is going to be a really cheap training method for you if you can't afford to do gems. It's basically the same concept. You're just getting glass out of the bank and blowing it. What should you make? Just make the highest level thing that you can. The amount of money that you would save or make by doing a certain item isn't worth the experience loss. It's so negligible. So just do the highest item you can if this is the method you're using. Boys, we did it. We got the back three back. Let's go back to the year 2006. You're a literal child, and the only way that you know how to train fletching is by cutting and stringing logs. For the most AFK part, we're going to focus on just cutting the log. Uh, you could easily do this on mobile, totally not while you're working from home. And uh, I would skip stringing these because it is going to be twice as click intensive since you can only do 14 per inventory. You do make some money from it, but it's such a microscopic amount uh, that it's really not worth stringing them. If you were looking to pay enough attention to be able to string them, I recommend that you make dragon arrows. The experience is going to be like 20x. Uh, it does cost you money, but you're going to get flushing over with much more quickly, and it's about as click intensive as stringing bows. Where do I even begin with this one? This is really going to be dictated to you by your Slayer Master since they're going to decide what you have to kill. But let's look at how you can make your Slayer Test more AFK. First off, you're going to be using Duradel. Duradel assigns you more monsters at a time than Neve, and he allows you to choose the most AFK location possible, unlike Konar. There are a ton of tasks that are aggressive to you, like Gargoyles, Greater Demons, Dagonauts, the list goes on. Most of these will have that 10 minute aggression timer, so I do recommend that NPC aggression timer plugin that we talked about earlier to see the aggression lines. But there are a few monsters like the Dark BCC here that will never lose aggression. I do recommend completing your combat achievements as it will allow you to store more cannonballs in the hopper in your cannon, which does increase your AFK time. The first time I made a similar video, I used birdhouses as an AFK method, but honestly, this is a bit of a cop out. Sure, there is a 50 minute cooldown, but when you're actually doing the birdhouses, it's not really AFK at all. You're running and clicking the entire time. Well, personally, I did herbivore to 99. Uh, it's like 200K an hour. It's super duper chill. It's not AFK though. If you do want AFK, your best method in the game is gonna be maniacal monkeys. Uh, I haven't actually done this before filming this right here to make this video, but I did watch a guide beforehand. They did tell me, uh, it was small XP limb, by the way. Uh, he did say that you get around 60 to 100,000 experience per hour, depending on your level and how AFK you actually are. If you're not checking it as much, obviously you're gonna get less. As you saw there, the monkey runs in, you get his tail. It's kind of a little bit brutal, don't love that, but it's a thousand experience every time you check the trip. So you could go away, do something else, check this every once in a while and claim your thousand experience. You guys already knew that it was going to be stars. I don't really need to say too much more. These were good before, but like six months ago, Jagex made them even better. At higher levels, you can get around 30 to 40,000 experience per hour. And the best thing is that other people being at the star no longer neuters your experience rates. My absolute favorite method of finding stars is in the Star Miners Discord. Link in the description down below. If I forget, just let me know in the comments and I will add it. Uh, in their star, star callout section, active star stars just go over here and it will show you all of the currently active stars in game the level of star that you are able to mine depends on your mining level each layer lasts seven minutes which means that you can afk for seven minutes while mining before needing to click onto the next layer in the star shop you can buy the celestial ring which gives you a passive mining boost and you can also buy the star fragments which gives you the ability to change your mining outfit to this gold variant 
So before I dive into the few different methods that I do want to discuss in here, smithing has a few methods that you can intentionally make them slower and worse, but I don't think that makes it a better AFK method just because you're intentionally doing it poorly in order to make it more AFK. All right, Grandpa's gonna get off his soapbox for a minute here. The most AFK method for training the smithing skill is making cannonballs. Basically, you're converting steel bars at a furnace into cannonballs. You can double the speed of this with the double ammo mold from the Giant's Foundry, but it's still extremely slow. The main concept of smithing involves either turning ore into bars or bars into a finished good. From smelting, the most amount of experience that you can fit into one inventory is gold bars with the goldsmith gauntlets. However, this can be done so much more quickly with the blast furnace, it seems ridiculous to do these at a regular furnace. That brings us on to converting bars into finished good. The most amount of experience that we can get out of one inventory is with the rune bars. So this is what I was talking about at the beginning of the section by intentionally making something worse. This inventory has the same amount of experience in it, no matter what I make out of these bars. Do I intentionally make it slower by doing something like daggers or axes, which take one bar, thus making it a longer time to complete my full inventory? Or do I just make plate bodies, get the same amount of experience and finish this quicker? Either way, it's the same amount of experience per input. The only way that I could see you really stretching this into uh, something that is a more AFK activity would be making dart tips. Dart tips generally sell for more since people do fletch darts for fletching experience. This is going to be the longest amount of time possible that you could AFK with this inventory, and there is a bit of a dual purpose with it. Fishing is the classic AFK skill. Just click the fishing spot, wait for your inventory to fill up, and either bank or drop the fish. At the end of the day, nothing is going to beat barbarian fishing. You catch them so fast, the spots don't really move around that much, and you can usually get a full inventory off of just one or two clicks. If you're an Iron Man, you know all about Kambam Bams. This spot never moves ever under any circumstances, so one click fills your entire inventory. If you were lucky enough to get a fish barrel from Temporos as well, you get a whole extra inventory. So one click, two inventories, and then you can bank all of your fish, come back and repeat it. Uh, the experience isn't that great. As you can see, the experience drops popping up here on screen. It's 50 each. I would guess this is around 30 to 40K, eh, probably closer to 30K an hour. But as I said before, it's one click for two inventories of fish, and this is really good if you're an Iron Man. The cooking skill, another old classic, one of the first skills you ever trained, and you're not gonna train it any different this time. The most AFK way to train the cooking skill is to just cook fish on a range. I do recommend using the Hosidious range as it does lower your chance of burning the fish and the cooking gauntlets from the family crest quest, that is really hard to say, further lowers this chance. For which fish you want to use, this one's a little bit tricky and I'm not going to do all the math for you. Burning a fish offers no experience, so this would lower your experience rates if you burn a fish but the higher level fish that you're more likely to burn also give you more experience, so it kind of offsets this. I would play this one by ear and just figure out something that works for you. That's right, boys. They finally introduced bonfires to old school RuneScape. It's pretty simple. You just use your logs on the existing fire and it just automatically adds them from your inventory. It's super reclined. You can do the whole inventory in one go. The experience is way less than if you manually burnt every log though, and you're gonna get way less experience than you would at Winter Todd. Woodcutting is essentially fishing, but the experience is way better. Honestly, I could make a whole video about the neglect of the fishing skill, but in this section, we're gonna be talking about chopping trees. See this tree right here? You are never going to chop this thing. Basically, you're just going to AFK trees your entire time with woodcutting. You could do like two tic and all that, but I just don't think it's really worth it. I would go from willows to teaks, then blisterwoods, and finally end up here at redwoods. Redwoods are honestly the single best AFK training method in the entire game. They're like 65 to 70K an hour, clicking like a total of 10 times over the course of that hour. Uh, I got a comment in one of my recent videos about not hating on people who cut magic trees enough. So here it is. Last but not least is farming. Jagex put this last on our skill log. I actually love farming. The basic gist of farming is you plant all your plants, you turn it into a daily, and you replant everything the next day. It's the same cop-out answer for AFK as birdhouses is. 
Uh, when you're actually going around collecting your experience from all your trees and everything, it's really not AFK at all. If it's like the least AFK thing. But there is like a 23 hour cooldown in between, so if you count those 23 hours, it's the most AFK skill, while also simultaneously being the least AFK skill. Honestly, I had nothing else to put in this section. I gotta get this video out, so if you would put something else in this section, let me know in the comments.